In this video, we're going to be discussing whether you should use a thinner weight oil in the winter time. This oil is definitely a little too thick. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Dave channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing whether you should use thinner oil in the winter time. And the reason I'm making this video is it's winter time now, and a lot of people are probably wondering, is the oil in my engine suited for these colder temperatures? And that's why I'm making this video. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you a little experiment I did where I took three different oils, and I subjected them to three different temperatures, and we're going to see how they operate in those temperatures, okay? So stick tuned for that. So the question really is, should you use thinner oil in the winter time? And the answer to that is, well, maybe. And the reason for that is it really depends on what's the ambient temperature your engine's operating in and what is your manufacturer's recommendation for that operating range. In general, never go against your owner's manual or the manufacturer recommendation when it comes to your viscosity that's in your engine. Remember, they designed that engine, and a lot of times they're expecting you to, you to use their oil, so they want you to use a certain viscosity at a certain temperature, okay? So first thing to do is check your owner's manual or your maintenance manual and see what it says, and we're going to be talking about that right now. So before getting into the exact manufacturer recommendations, I wanted to discuss why you want to stick with them. If you run too thin of an oil, you're potentially leaving your metal components, your bearings, pistons, any metal-to-metal -metal contact up to damage because you are using too thin of an oil for what the manufacturer has built in to protect those metal parts. That's bearings, camshaft, rockers, and of course, if they're damaging, they're going to throw metal into the oil. Not very good. Now, if you run too thick of an oil, you have another concern because the oil is going to mostly bypass the oil filter when cold. And the thicker the oil, the more it's going to bypass. And of course, you do not want oil bypassing your oil filter as much as possible. Now, this can also lead to, this is a gear-driven oil pump here, damage to the oil pump or premature failure because the oil pump is going to have to work much, much harder when the oil is much thicker than it's supposed to be, and it can put strain on the oil pump as well as the gear train. Now, this oil pump most likely was not damaged from too thick oil, but oil pumps can fail. So let's get into what we have here is a Chevrolet truck owner's manual clip. And we're going to read it. It says, use 0W20 viscosity grade for your V8 engines. You can use a 5W30 if you're using a 4.3 or a 6 liter V8. Notice, cold temperature operations, you can use a 0W30 if you're getting to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit or less. Now, notice the upper number, the 30 doesn't change. It's the lower number, the 0W, not the 5W. So, always go with the manufacturer recommendation. Now, this chart is a Caterpillar chart. And, of course, most diesels are going to be using 15W40, at least the cats. Now, notice the temperature range, 15 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you switch to a 5W40, your upper number does not change. It's still 122 degrees, but look at the lower number. It gives you a much wider temperature range, minus 22. So you get a much better cold oil, cold viscosity oil if you go with a lower number, the 5W40. So as you can see from what we just discussed, most of the time you're not going to have to do anything with your oil unless you're in an extremely cold condition. And for the most part, that's due to these multi-grade oils. You know, this isn't the 1940s where you had 40 weight oil and in the winter you had to change to a different viscosity. The W in the, let's say, 15W40 stands for winter. So that oil was designed to operate in a very wide range of temperatures. And of course, in most newer engines, the lower number, the cold number, is very low. It's a 0, 5, maybe a 10 weight oil. Outside of diesels, many diesels still will run a 15W40, although many newer ones are starting to go to the 5W40 because it's just, 
it allows it a much greater range from cold temperatures to hot temperatures. Now, the other thing you have to remember is you don't want your upper number to change typically in colder conditions, unless it's extremely cold. Let's say where the high is going to be, you know, maybe around zero degrees. And the reason for that is even though the outside temperature, the ambient air temperature might be lower, the engine operating temperature is probably not going to be very much colder. Your oil temp, of course, will be a little less in colder conditions, but usually that has a lot to do with the coolant temperature, and your coolant temperature is usually still going to be around 200 degrees, and since most engines, diesel engines in particular, have an oil cooler, the oil and the coolant temp are usually going to be pretty close. So you don't want to drop that upper number very much. And the reason for that is it could potentially leave your engine up to damage because the oil will be too thin at those higher temperatures. So, but as I said before, always go with the manufacturer recommendation, okay? Now, that pretty much answers the question whether you should use thinner oil in the winter time. Now let's get into that little experiment I was talking about at the beginning of the video. So what I have here is 15W40, 5W30, and synthetic 5W30. And we're gonna be subjecting these different oils to different temperatures and seeing how they pour on a bearing. This is a rod bearing, and you can see it's used, got a little damage on it. And we're also gonna be pouring it through a screen into a bowl. And the screen's gonna kind of simulate, simulate your oil sump pickup. So we have our 15W40, and the temperature of this oil and the ambient temperature in the room is about 65 degrees. And you can see that it pours freely. It's a little bit thicker than water. It runs off the bearing easily. This would not cause any poor conditions or performance in the engine, obviously. And remember, the 15W40 had a minimum operating temperature of 15 degrees, so anything above that it should be okay. Now we're doing the screen test, so we're pouring this cup into the screen, obviously, to see how long it takes to gravity feed through it. And as you can see, it is pouring through rather quickly, should not be a concern at about 65 degrees with the 15W40. Now moving on, we have our conventional 5W30. This is obviously a little bit thinner in the cooler temperature range here, and we're going to pour it on our bearing. And I had a recollection that the synthetic and the conventional would operate differently in the cold condition test, but uh, you'll see at the end that they really do not. Now, as you can see, pouring it on the bearing, it pours more freely than the 15W40, as it should, and it's dripping easier. It's almost similar to water. And we still have some surface tension here on it, and it's still got some tackiness. Now we're going to do our pour test. This is the conventional 5W30, remember? So let's pour it in here, see how long it takes to go through the screen. And as you can see, it is filtering through the screen rather quickly, similar to water. And that is our 5W30. Now let's go with our synthetic 5W30. This is still at 65 degrees. And we're gonna do our bearing pour test. Pouring it on. And remember, this is the same viscosity as the conventional 5W30, so operating very similarly. It pours off very similar to water. It leaves a small amount of oil on the bearing and seems to be operating normally. Now, time for a pour test. Just like the other ones, we're going to pour it through the screen here and see how long it takes. It's very thin, of course it's going to gravity feed right through this screen. Now, this is the point at where we start changing the temperature. This oil is about 35 degrees now. I cooled all three down to 35 degrees. So we have our pour test here, 15W40, the heaviest one. And as you can see, the oil's starting to slow down. It's becoming thicker. You could see it was starting to stack there a little bit as I was pouring it. And it's a little more like a, uh, a heavier oil. It's acting like that, but it's still in its normal operating range. Now, what you'll notice here is that it takes a little bit longer to go through the screen test. Now, remember, this screen is a little bit of a better filter than most oil sump pickups. But if you think about it like that, 
you know, this oil has to go through that screen before it even gets to the filter. So as you can see, it's taking quite a bit longer to fully filter through the screen. And this is at 35 degrees. That's 20 degrees above the minimum operating temperature for 15W40. And it's a little stickier because it's a little thicker. Now we have our 5W30. Still seems to be in pretty good condition here. And uh, you're going to see that hasn't really changed due to the temperature change. So this is, remember, 35 degrees Fahrenheit, which would be about, what, 2 degrees centigrade. So we are pouring it on the bearing. Seems to operate almost exactly as it did at 65 degrees. So we're going to do our pour test next on the 5W30 conventional. So we're going to pour the whole cup through and see how long it takes. Now it's taking a little bit longer than it did last time, but performing much better than the 15W40. So, you know, if you're getting around freezing, you might want to start looking at a little bit thinner oil. So we have our synthetic 5W30. I'm going to do the same test. We're going to pour it on the bearing. This is, of course, still at 35 degrees. And then we're going to do our screen test. So same as the conventional. It's going to pour still fairly easily. It doesn't seem to have thickened up very much and seems to still have all the same properties it did at 65 just a little bit thicker it's almost like an olive oil in consistency so now it's time for the pour test the last of the 35 degree pour tests and this is a, the synthetic 5w30 as i mentioned before and as you can see it filters through a little bit slower than at 65 degrees but still seems to have very good performance so now you can see just from the the uh, frost almost on the cup. We're much colder. This is 15W40, and this is at zero degrees Fahrenheit. So this is 15 degrees below the minimum for this oil, at least in a cat. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pour it on our bearing and see how it pours and operates. Now, as you can see, uh, if I had put honey in this cup, it'd be operating about the same. This is really, really thick now, this 15W40. You, if you're around this temperature, I would not recommend it unless the manufacturer says it's okay to be running this heavy of an oil in this cold of a condition. It's just very non-free flowing. Now the pour test here, you saw part of it already at the introduction of the video, but it's pretty much honey. It's really, really thick. Uh, as you can see, it just started pouring through the the screen here a couple seconds after I poured it into the screen and this ends up taking quite a while for it to filter through here it's just really really thick uh, would not want to run this heavy of an oil in any sort of cold condition now remember this is just cold conditions so I'm gonna even cut out a large percentage of this video here I'm gonna cut out 30 seconds ahead and see if it's filtered through yet so this is 30 seconds ahead Still is not filtered through. 15W40, zero degrees, I would say, is, it's failing. It's not going through this screen like it should. So now we're going to cut over to the 5W30. So we have our 5W30, and we're going to do our bearing pour test. Now I had all of these in the same freezer right next to each other, and they're all zero degrees. So as you can see, it is... Much better flowing than our 15W40 was, just from swirling it around in the cup there. And we're going to pour it. So it is thickened up, obviously, quite a bit, but it is much better than the 15W40. And remember, this 5W30, at least according to Cat, was good up to minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's still within its operating range. It's, it's almost operating like the 15W40 did when it was 35 degrees. So a much better oil to use in this cold condition so pouring the oil in there as you can see it's definitely slowed down from before when it was 35 degrees but it is filtering through the screen much quicker than the 15w40 was you can still see some stacking where it's slow to pour through but it much better much better performer here so we have our 5w30 now i had a theory that this test kind of shows doesn't matter, but I thought that the synthetic would operate better than the conventional would. And now we're gonna test our synthetic 5W30. 
And you'll see that it doesn't really seem to matter. It seems to pour through, and the bearing consistency test is about the same. So, not saying synthetic isn't worth the money, I'm just saying that as far as the viscosity goes, it doesn't seem to affect it. So, we're doing our pour test here on the bearing, and just like the uh, 5W30 conventional, this is operating about the same. It's operating like the 15W40 did at 35 degrees. It's a little bit thicker than, of course, it was at the warmer temperatures, but still very much useful. So, we're going to do our pour test now. And you'll see that it operates just about the same as the conventional, but much better than the 15W40. So, poor test here. Slower, obviously, a little bit of stacking when it's uh, hitting the, the puddle. And it's working its way through. Now, this was just kind of a neat little experiment I did just for making this video, but also I kind of wanted to see how it operated myself. And uh didn't cost too much money, and hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed this entire video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.